since then, the system is falling into some disarray and is under attack. Primarily, I would say, because of the concerns of the, the copyright industries, the content industries. Clearly, again, without getting into the politics of it, um, the prevalence of downloading and, and other forms of P2P intermediaries, etc., is causing concern to the content industries. Um, therefore, they are finding that notice and takedown for them is not an adequate paradigm and what they would rather move to and what has been lobbied for extensively, particularly in countries like France and the UK, has been to move beyond notice and takedown to what is sometimes called notice and disconnection or graduated response or three strikes and you're out. So this places ISPs especially, but perhaps also hosts in the position of being what you could call in inverted commas copyright cops. So they're not simply required to remove infringing content on notice, but to take an active role in warning users that they are alleged to be infringing copyright, perhaps an active role in monitoring users, perhaps even an active role in inspecting content in a very detailed way using deep packet inspection. That's the world that we're moving into. Um, a second area where I think enormous amount of pressure is coming on to, to ISPs and hosts relates to global fears about the prevalence of access to child pornography and also other types of unwanted material, such as adult material, extreme pornography, um, hate speech, and indeed pro-terror material, as in pro-jihad websites and so forth. So again, here we have another um, driver towards this time the state perhaps rather than commerce being interested in moving again to filtering ex ante blacklisting filtering deep packet inspection rather than in post factum notice and takedown so again we have significant political drivers towards developing a filtering infrastructure um, we see that already for example in the UK with the Internet Watch Foundation we see attempts to introduce such in Australia which may or may not be going ahead um, and these have obvious problems for human rights, I think, in terms of transparency, due process, freedom of expression, and so forth. A third area, which I think uh, another person on the panel is going to talk about, which gets less publicity, is the idea that also we are facing a cybersecurity crisis, which I think is indubitable, um, and therefore, again, perhaps ISPs especially could perform a role in trying to identify and isolate um, zombie machines, bots. Now, that's a very good idea, and I think someone else is going to talk about it. But again, it has worries in terms of the potential liability for the ISPs. Can they do this? Can they identify this traffic? What is the implications for their relationship with their subscribers? What are the implications for the privacy and the autonomy of their subscribers? How are you going to identify the bad traffic from the good traffic? And so forth. Um, so, as I say, if you summarize on that, you see that both industry and state public interest um, interests are driving towards a, a move from post factum notice and take down of material to prior filtering which I think should concern us in a, in a human rights forum um, and secondly that we are moving to some extent towards dangers of um, systems where there is a lack of transparency where there is scope creep where there is a lack of the due process that you would get in a court system towards the intermediaries um, perhaps mandated by the state, making decisions, as it were, behind closed doors about content. Um, so finally, I think, uh, yes, let me just very, very quickly, because I know I'm not meant to take too much time, um, say that if you go back to the ISP sub story that I described in the first slide, you can actually see that much of it's been unpicked. Now, this does not mean that we do not need intermediary immunities, I stress, but it does mean that it, e it is easy for interests opposed to intermediary immunities to say we don't need them anymore. So for example, 